guys, in today's video, I wanted to talk about hyperpigmentation around the eyes. I know a lot of you guys struggle with this because it's one of the most frequently asked questions that I get both here on YouTube as well as over on my Instagram and on TikTok. What can I do to fade hyperpigmentation under my eyes, dark under eye circles? And there are so many creams out there that claim to improve the look of dark circles and hyperpigmentation under the eyes. And you probably have spent money trying out these creams only to find out they really don't do anything. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to hyperpigmentation around the eyes, the skin around the eyes is very thin and very delicate. Truthfully, traditional skin lightening ingredients like hydroquinone, vitamin C, retinoid, they honestly don't work particularly well for hyperpigmentation around the eyes. Why, you might ask? Well, because the skin there is thin and delicate, a lot of the pigment actually ends up leaking out into the deeper layers of the skin where topical skin brightening and lightening agents are simply not going to access that pigment. Um, and therefore it ends up actually taking you several steps back because a lot of these products can be, or ingredients can be very irritating. Retinoids, for example, can be particularly irritating around the eyes as can hydroquinone. And anytime you actually have irritation, that ends up worsening hyperpigmentation. It's called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So trying out a bunch of different skin lightening ingredients actually can take you several steps back just by causing too much irritation. Remember, the skin around the eyes is very delicate, very thin, and so it can't handle irritating ingredients like elsewhere on the face or body. Now in today's video, I'm specifically talking about the hyperpigmentation issue, but remember, a lot of people have dark circles that are hereditary and it's really just due to their, their facial anatomy, the structure of their eye socket. No topical is going to correct that. And I have a video explaining the different procedures that can you know, improve the appearance of those types of dark under eye circles. If you have hereditary dark circles, products are, they're not gonna do anything. They're not going to be able to change your facial structure. So by and large, most products claiming to improve the look of dark circles, they're not gonna work. The one product that definitely is necessary to prevent further darkening of the hyperpigmentation, in the case of pigment, is sun protection. Wearing a broad spectrum sunscreen around the eyes is really important to protect against ultraviolet radiation that not only drives pigment, but causes inflammation in the skin that further drives hyperpigmentation. Now, some sunscreens also can protect you against another type of wavelength of light that actually is now, we've now learned, causes hyperpigmentation to be more stubborn, more persistent, and that is visible light. Uh, tinted sunscreens that have iron oxides in them actually can protect against those pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Also, your makeup can protect against those as well. Concealers, under eye concealers, um, not only camouflage the dark circles or the hyperpigmentation, but they also provide some protection against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. So makeup actually can protect you not only from, in some cases actually makeup can protect you against ultraviolet radiation from the sun, but by and large makeup will offer protection against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. I recommend choosing a waterproof sunscreen. Why? These tend to not settle in the creases as much as non-waterproof. They tend to adhere to the skin and stay put with sweating a little bit better. So they they're better around the eyes. I suggest a waterproof mineral sunscreen for a few reasons. Waterproof, again, less likely to settle in the creases. And then mineral sunscreens are much less likely to cause any irritation around the eyes. As opposed to chemical sunscreens, a lot of people find that those sting and burn around the eyes and are just too irritating. So select a mineral sunscreen. I always tell people to choose a mineral sunscreen formulated for babies in which the active ingredient is zinc oxide. Uh, why? Well, sunscreens formulated for babies, they tend to, you know, be made for very sensitive skin, very uh, delicate skin, perfect around the eyelids, around the eyes. Now, you're gonna get a white cast with the uh, zinc oxide mineral sunscreen. So I recommend, uh, as a second step, using a, con a concealer, a cosmetic concealer, to not only cover the white cast, but to offer you additional protection against those pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light. Now, one of the nice things about using a zinc oxide sunscreen around the eyes is that 
uh, you know, you layer, you layer your cosmetics on over it, but because it does give that white cast, it's actually gonna kind of brighten up the under eye area quite a bit. Along those lines, when you're selecting a concealer, choose a concealer that is at least one to two shades lighter than your surrounding skin. This will help make the under eye look a lot brighter. So not only do you have that white cast from the zinc oxide sunscreen there, but you also are putting makeup on over it. You're really gonna get actually a, a nice brightening um, effect from that cosmetic approach. Mineral sunscreens and sticks are a nice option. Um, actually, the Vanity Cream Lip SPF that I use for my lips. You can also take a little bit of this and put it on your finger and dab it under your eyes for sunscreen as well. Um, it's perfect there, it stays in place really well and doesn't settle into the creases. So I actually use this sometimes around my eyes as well. So that's a, a really good option. I also strongly encourage everybody to wear sunglasses when they're outdoors not only to protect the eyes from ultraviolet radiation, but of course to protect the skin around the eyes. Ideally, sunglasses should kind of be the wraparound style of frames because it, basically it will help block uh, UV from coming in the sides. You know, typical glasses like this, they'll offer some protection against UV rays coming this way, but they're not gonna necessarily block out rays coming from the side. One tip when it comes to choosing your sunglasses, especially you know in this case where you're trying to improve hyperpigmentation under the eyes, don't choose sunglasses that have metal frames. Why? Well, the metal frames actually conduct heat and heat can worsen hyperpigmentation quite a bit. And not only under your eyes, but also on your cheek. And the metal frames also tend to uh, reflect sunlight more Onto your, onto your skin and give you, and as a result, give you even more exposure. All right, so we talked about sun protection and we talked about concealers. There are actually ingredients that may help improve the look of hyperpigmentation in the eyes. Two in particular that I think are worth considering. Caffeine, as well as vitamin K. Caffeine is an antioxidant and it can constrict the blood vessels and that can actually help push some fluid out from under the eye and just improve the overall look of dark under eye circles. Caffeine also, because it's an antioxidant, can potentially reduce the burden of free radical damage that further worsens hyperpigmentation. Vitamin K is also an antioxidant and an anti-inflammatory, and it has been shown in combination with caffeine to improve the appearance of dark under eye circles. I have a whole video covering my top vitamin K creams for around the eyes, but that is the second ingredient definitely worth considering. So I will list those down below for you guys, but ca both caffeine and vitamin K, those are good ingredients to entertain the idea of incorporating into your skincare routine to brighten up the look of um, hyperpigmentation under the eyes. Um, especially caffeine and vitamin K, they tend to be pretty well tolerated. You know, nothing is 100%. And the reason that's important is because again, anything that causes irritation can actually end up worsening the hyperpigmentation around your eyes. But those two ingredients, they tend to be well tolerated. Um, so I will list those down below for you guys. What about uh, massage and like jade rollers and things like that? Well, honestly, those things actually don't hurt uh, to try. And the reason they may give you some temporary improvement in the look of dark uh, circles or hyperpigmentation in the eyes is because we'll just kind of push some excess fluid out from those tissues and as a result smooth things out and flatten things out. So I'm not opposed to a little bit of gentle massage. You know on Amazon they sell those um, cooling kind of ball gizmos uh, that you can chill in the refrigerator or the freezer and pat under the eyes. That definitely can help uh, not only uh, reduce swelling, but just sort of brighten up the under eye area by vasoconstriction. When it comes to hyperpigmentation in the eyes, it's about prevention with sun protection, and it's about improving, not totally clearing the hyperpigmentation, uh, just to kind of set your expectations going in. Um, another type of product that you will see, I, I love using these myself, um, are under eye hydrogel patches. Now those tend to have caffeine in them and they have, you know, they're typically cold when you put them on the skin. So they have a cooling effect that can kind of help also in reducing swelling as opposed to the little 
ice ball things. I happen to love the Derma E under eye hydrogel patches, and also Good Molecules has a good a good uh, hydrogel under eye patches. I will link those down below. Um, those are nice to do actually um, in the morning before you start getting ready, like while you're having your coffee. That's when I like to do them because swelling and puffiness under the eyes is worse in the morning and that can ultimately make the dark circles, the hyperpigmentation look much more noticeable. And it's just kind of nice to do those before going on to do your skincare routine and put on your makeup. Um, it kind of lessens things from the get-go. It's a very temporary, modest difference, but I do think it's worth doing if you have the time to incorporate it, why not? Speaking of puffiness, if you have under eye bags, then that too is gonna worsen the appearance of hyperpigmentation under the eyes just by having that collection of fluid there under the eyes. A few things can make that worse. If you eat a high salt diet, uh, you can have fluid retention and that's gonna show up most notably under the eyes. It'll be more obvious first thing in the morning. So keep an eye on your sodium and your diet. You know, if you're like me, a pickle and olive fanatic, um, maybe dial back on that a little bit, it can help. Or, you know, a lot of fast food, restaurant food has very high salt content that can definitely make your under eyes look puffy the following morning. So just being mindful of your sodium intake. Um, sleep with your head on like two pillows or slightly elevated. This will help with drainage of that fluid. If you've ever noticed, the puffiness tends to be worse at night because you're lying you're lying down and it kind of has time to pool there. If you keep your head elevated ever so slightly, that will help. I sleep on that sleep and glow pillow. I love it. It does provide a little bit of an elevation, but you can also just do like two pillows or some people have those beds that you can adjust the height, that the height of the head, you can raise the head. That is another, another thing that can help. And then last but certainly not least, um, it's seasonal, but if you have seasonal allergies, that will certainly make the dark under eye circles and the hyperpigmentation look a lot more noticeable because first of all, you have fluid that accumulates there from sinus drainage, making it look more obvious. And then if you're rubbing your eyes, that's gonna create irritation around the delicate eyelid skin that's further going to exacerbate the hyperpigmentation. It's going to lead to more post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So, you know, check in with your primary care doctor or your allergist if you have really bad seasonal allergies and consider a at least two week trial of an over the counter antihistamine like Allegra or Zyrtec, Claritin, um, because that can definitely help. You have to be on it for at least two weeks before you really start noticing a difference because those non sedating antihistamines, they have to kind of build up in your system before they start working. You don't really just pop one and you know suddenly have bright under eyes. All right guys, those are my tips on improving hyperpigmentation under the eyes. It is a really frustrating thing to cope with. Um, and I don't want you guys to drop any more change on expensive eye creams and things, you know, promising results. There's really, a very limited number of things that can help. There are certainly several procedures that can definitely improve hyperpigmentation under the eyes. Certain lasers, like Pico, the Pico laser, can definitely help. So if you're really bothered by the hyperpigmentation in the eyes, definitely see a dermatologist for um, cosmetic treatment. I know it's not cheap or you know accessible to everybody, but if you have it in your area, if you have it in your budget, I would definitely recommend that. Uh, working with them because that can get you more sustained, more noticeable results. Products, they're really not gonna do that much. And m most products actually can end up worsening things just by being too irritating. So those are my tips, you guys, on improving hyperpigmentation under the eyes. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.